أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين for this good days الحمد لله that we living to observe رمضان الحمد لله we are able to fast we are able to do قيام we are able to read Quran we are able to get together and to recite ayat and make tawbah, make istighfar, right? This is all blessing, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Right from home. And today was Jumu'ah. Probably a lot of you went to Salat al-Jumu'ah, alhamdulillah. May Allah accept anything you're doing, you're inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One more time. Inshallah, I want to do a beautiful reflection about Surah Yusuf because every Ramadan, subhanallah, it's, it's a sunnah, it's a culture. I'm not going to say sunnah. It's a culture of all many masajid. They select one surah and they do reflection. And subhanAllah, over and over, ICPC also have a, a theme about Surah Yusuf. And I remember the first time uh, Surah Yusuf was every night, uh, uh, Dr. Islam Fayyumi was talking about uh, this surah every night. How deep is this surah, subhanAllah? It's just one story. And uh, it's one long surah, but it's all about one story. And this story about individual family. You all have family, we all have family. You know, subhanAllah, uh, even if we don't have children, we have a parents, that's what family is. You have a husband, if not, you have brother, sister. Uh, that Surah Yusuf talk about family. So let's do, do some reflection, inshaAllah ta'ala, what is the benefit we can have uh, from this surah, from this story and apply it, inshaAllah, in our life. So uh, we're not going over the surah because all of you know the story of Yusuf alayhi salam with his family. But what started from the beginning is the jealousy. Uh, we call it uh, hasad. Uh, what made the brothers of uh, yani Yusuf to decide to get rid of Yusuf because they knew that Yusuf will get something they don't have. It. He will have something they don't have it based on his dream. Even before the dream, how the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, Ya'qub alayhi salam, he's a prophet too. He used to pay extra attention on the youngest, the two youngest in the house as boys, 12 boys he has, mashallah. The two youngest were Yusuf and Benjamin. So obviously uh, ask any mother, if you have a baby now, if she cries Sarah, we jump on her. She's a few months old. I'm like Adam, five years old. So subhanAllah, the youngest in the house take extra attention does not mean sometimes because the parents love the baby more, right? That's why we say when you have a new child come to the house, we have to be very careful how we should not just uh, neglect the others because they might feel jealousy of that baby because the parents pay attention extra, the guests come, they bring gift to the baby, right? All the time. So if you neglect the other one, they might feel the jealous, subhanAllah. As if when Yusuf alayhi salam have that dream about having 11 star bowing down and parents, uh, which is the sun and the moon, uh, the father told him, don't tell your dream to your brother. Don't let them know because they're gonna feel jealous because the shaitan will come between. But we know from the story that they got, they knew that Yusuf alayhi salam have the dream. Somehow the, you know, the, news, the news linked and they got it. And they said, already our father pay extra attention on Yusuf now, Yusuf is going to get something we don't have. Uh, so we have to get rid of him. Isn't it the same story in Mecca when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was already beloved as Muhammad, the son of Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib. Everyone in Mecca respected him. Everyone, including Abi Sufyan, including everyone. I mean, everyone will call him even Al-Amin. Even when they had a problem, where they get, who's going to touch the Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone, when the Kaaba was broken down? And who's going to replace that stone? They fought. Then they said, the first person who come, whatever his opinion, we're going to ask his opinion, and we're going to listen to him. So this way, the tribe don't fight. So that was Muhammad when he appeared. They said, oh my God, al Karim. this is a generous man. This is the al Amin. this is the trustworthy. Whatever he said, we all agree. And what was his decision? To take his shirt off and he put the stone, the black stone and the shirt and he asked all the tribe member to hold a piece of his shirt and elevate it. Then with his beautiful honorable hand and the place and everybody agreed. That's how much they loved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what happened after the age of forty, and he became a prophet? Oh, okay. I'm... Right? What, what happened? They decided to kill him 
They decided to kick him out of Mecca if they, can't, they couldn't kill him. They decided to mistreat him. They did call them all the names. Why? Because they were jealous. Umayyah bin Khala, Abi Sufyan, Abu Lahab, uh, you know, uh, Kibar, Kibar, the, 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 the people who they call themselves are the greatest people in, in, in Mecca, the leader of Mecca. They didn't get the position to become a prophet. It didn't fall into their family. It's not one of their son. How come Muhammad immediately, now he became a, a messenger. He's gonna have this honorable to become a messenger. He has no father, he's an orphan. He has no business, he has no money, he has no position, right? He's not one of our leader in Mecca. So that's why they get jealous. So jealousy sometimes is to become dangerous when you see people, they have something, you don't have it. So what is that jealous is? The type of that jealous, Allah does not like it, we call it hasad, is when you wish that person to lose what they have, but you want to have it for you. That's the envy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it. We said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, min sharri ma khalaq, wa min sharri ghasiqan idha waqab, wa min sharri nafasati fil uqad, wa min sharri hasidan idha hasad. You know, the envier, when they envy you, it's not good. But uh, uh, let's talk that the Prophet also said there is a two kind of envy which is good. One envy, bil Arabi, this two kind what accepted in Islam is the world is ghibta bil Arabi, ghibta. Ana andi ghibta, yani ana andi hasad, andi ghira. I would love to. I would love to have, just like the Imam, he did the khutbah to Jum'ah today. He has such knowledge. He memorized the Quran. So every time I hear his voice, I said, oh, I wish I can do the same. I wish I can memorize the entire Quran. I can teach the Quran. I can learn the Quran myself and teach it and work with the Quran. That kind of of jealous is accepted in Islam. So the hadith says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَا حَسَدْ إِلَّا فِي إِثْنَيْنِ رَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ يَقُومُ بِهِ أَنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَأَنَاءَ النَّهَارِ What does that mean? The man given, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the honorable to understand and read and memorize Quran. And he worked with this Quran day and night. So just like the imams who they devoted their life to be imam in the masajid. Those people don't say it's an easy job. It's not easy because they have to be five times on the prayer times in the masjid. They have to be at the Isha. Right now, in Ramadan is harder even. They have to be up all night doing Qiyam. Then they have to be daytime doing the classes. Uh, they can not just be invited even somebody's house for dinner. Then after dinner, you know what? If I don't go to Isha, it's okay. The, house, the masjid is far, I'm here. Or I'm gonna take a vacation wherever I want go there and do something. No, they have to be on time for Salat. <laughs> They're the one at Imma, right? So their job is not easy as we think sometimes because they have to be there. Uh, if, if there is a death, they have to come for the funeral, the barrier. If there is a wedding, they invite them, they have to come for the nikah. If people have an issue problem, they have to be there for that to serve the community. Their job not as easy, but they have that job because they have the knowledge. Sometimes you wish you can have that. That kind of ghibta or a jealousy or an envy is accepted in Islam. The second type is rajulan atahu al-mal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave someone a, a wealth. They're rich, but they're spending their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right and left. And fistirli wal alaniya. You might know that they donated $10,000, $25,000 in one night. You say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. How could that person can do that? Right? Sometimes you think that's my annual income, $25,000. And that person just write the check and just give it away. So you wish you have that. And it says the hadith, when you do sadaqah, if you have the same intention to do the same amount or more, if you have the same amount of money, you have the same ajr. Ya Allah. Isn't it amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has worked? Because Allah is not looking to, you know, save the community because somebody put $25,000. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put barakah and did not put honest people to take care of that collectively, they collected the money. Imagine that, you know, some other centers, I don't know, I'm not going to mention any, but God forbid if somebody is they just divided between the members and while well, we collected $200,000, let's divide. You trust those people who work for the Islamic Center, right? And they divide it to the needy people. And that's why they tell you if it's zakat, tell us. If it's zakat, fatr, tell us. If it's sadaqah, different box. Because everything has to go a different way, subhanAllah. But if you have the same intention 
to do it, you have the same ajr. That's why always it's al amal bin niyat. I have $100, I put 80, I put 50, I, hey, maybe it's more rewarded than a man who, like Jafar bin Abi Talib, one time he was going to, uh, uh, to uh, the masjid, walking on the street, so he passed this garden. And in this garden, he saw uh, a slave man sitting, taking care of the garden. And while he's sitting, taking care of the garden, Jafar, Jafar is the cousin of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest Sahabi. So he said, Salaamu Alaikum, he sat down, to give company to the slave man, just to you know, chit chat with him. Then the man sat next to him, and he saw that next to him there are three loaf of bread. That's all his food for today. Those slave, slave people they work for their food. They get no pay. They just you know you're lucky the master gives them food and place to sleep, right? So he has a three loaf of bread sitting, and while he's talking to him, he said, a dog came approach us. And this dog looks like very hungry and thirsty <sighs> with a tongue out and his breath. So the man threw the first loaf of bread to the dog and the dog grabbed and ate it fast. Then he saw that this dog still hungry. He gave him the second loaf. He's still hungry. He gave him the third loaf and the dog ate the three loaf and he ran away. And uh, Jafar anhu, he looked at the man and he goes, but this is all the food you have. How could you just give away everything? He goes, well, maybe Allah will give me something else today. If not, I'll go sleep. Uh, you know, Allah gave me, but I saw this animal hungry. I got, I got, I got to offer, you know, all I have to this animal. Jafar, <laughs> he went, he asked who's the owner of the garden. He bought the entire garden with the slave and he freed the slave. He gave the garden to the slave and he gave it to him. He said, you still have more hasanat like me than me because I'm a generous. I don't give everything I have in my life, but you as poor as you were, you only have three loaf of bread for that day. You gave away everything. You're more generous than what I did to you right now. But he bought the garden and he gave it to the man after he bought the, guard, the slave and he freed him to him. SubhanAllah. So that kind of envy, jealousy, it's good. But anything else is not good. So what is the story now when the brothers get envy and uh, they, you know, we're going to take you to the end of the story. By the end of the story, what happened? What happened is when Yusuf salam claimed his brothers, right? And he's in Egypt now, he's wazir now, he has a position, he's rich, uh, his word is, you know, uh, accepted by the king and whatever he decides, it's all up to him. He asked his brothers, go back home to Palestine and bring your parents, bring everybody, and all of you, you move because there's starvation all over the world, including Palestine. Just come here. It's not fair for you. Every year you come and you take food, right? You all move here. And that's how the father moved. So when they met the father, when they told him, this shirt came from Yusuf, we found Yusuf, he's in a very good position, better position than us today. Oh, dad, you know, this is his shirt. The father, Yaqub salam, knew immediately from the smell. He put the shirt on his nose. Actually, he put it on his eyes because he lost his eyesight, crying over Yusuf salam, right? Then his eyesight came back for Tadda, uh, for Tadda Basira, it says, in that uh, moment, ayah number 96. He, his eyesight came back. Then the brothers, of Yusuf, which is the son of Yaqub salam, what did they say? Those are the 10 brothers, because the youngest of uh, brother was not included in this uh, uh, in this uh, plan where, where they plan to kill Yusuf, right? Alayhi uh, salam. Binyamin was too young. So what did they say? Qalu ya abana, ayah number 97. Qalu ya abana, lana inna They admitted. They said, it's all our fault. We made a big sin, but we need that. We need your uh, supplication. Yeah. Ask Allah for us to forgive us. Istaghfir lana. Yani ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a forgive, to forgive our sin. Inna kunna khati'in. Indeed, we were wrongdoer. What did the father say? Qala sawfa astaghfiru lakum rabbi. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. He did not raise his hand that moment. He said, oh, you're my boys. I will you know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. I will forgive you. I give you my blessing. I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you. No. He said, Sawfa in Arabic is future. 
I will ask Allah to forgive you. Innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim But what is this sofa says? The scholar, they said, it was daytime when Ya'qub alayhi salam have his sons came back home. He told them, sofa mean, I will when the dawn, before the dawn, the last third of the night when it comes, which is the most important time, right? The most significant moment for any dua to be accepted because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descent himself to the lowest level in the heaven and he look and he says Man yes, lahu. Man min sa'il who's asking me anything so I can give who's asking me for tawbah so I can forgive who asking me for any supplication so I can answer right so he wants to take that moment because there is a great places and a great time to do tawbah, to do istighfar, and to do dua. What a great month we're in, first of all, the month of Ramadan. So every moment of this month of Ramadan is a blessing. But the most blessing at all is when you get up for suhoor. Allah described the believers are in the suhoor time when you get up to eat, to drink, to, make, to pray maybe, to make dua before the dawn, that's the most important time when you do istighfar. So the best things to do at that time is to say astaghfirullah al -Azim. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive my sin. Oh Allah, forgive me. Tawbah, istighfar. I, I, I think reading Quran is great. Making salah is great. The best, the best, the most important is to do istighfar. Istighfar, to, to say astaghfirullah al -Azim, astaghfirullah al -Azim, So that's when Ya'qub alayhi salam, he wants to wait for that time when time come for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be more accepting the dua to ask for istighfar for his voice, even though he lived the 40 years of his life miserable, right? Because of what they did, subhanAllah. And also we know that since we're talking about the uh, uh, significant uh, uh, time, there are significant places also, right? If you are at the masjid, uh, you're in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think you're dua, and that's why you have to make the intention of i'tikaf when you enter the masjid. So I'm going to disconnect myself from the dunya. I'm not touching the phone unless I'm reading Quran or making dua or reading some Islamic stories, or I listen to the speakers, right? So that's the moment. It's not any, any other dunya talk no good, right? So because the place is the place, the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's, it's a very honorable place to make dua and to um, uh, to read Quran and to pray. And of course, uh, among all these masajid in the world, the best place is Al-Kaaba. Imagine you are doing now Umrah in Ramadan. You're in the Al-Haram al-Makki. And then uh, Al-Haram al-Nabawi, you visit Medina and you visit the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Al-Masjid al-Aqsa. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala free Masjid al-Aqsa from the istamar from the uh, occupation of the Israeli, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bring that message back, inshallah, to the control of the believer. So those are the best three masajid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned for himself. Because the first Qibla was before Al-Kaaba, it was for us, even as a Muslim, it was Jerusalem, uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Then it changed in the city of Medina to Al-Kaaba Al-Musharrafa. And of course, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gave a, such a magnificent valuable also to the Masjid al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you have, uh, you know, certain places, you make the dua, right? You make the uh, ibadah, the act of worship, more intense because the honorable place or the time, inshallah ta'ala. What else then if, if the father said, I will ask Allah to forgive. He did not punish the boys. He did not kick them out. He did not tell them, okay, I told you, you see, you said that the wolf era, that was the beginning. They said the wolf ate Yusuf, but now Yusuf alive. He didn't, he didn't react anything, but he said, I will ask Allah to forgive you. But let's come to Yusuf who suffered who was separated from his father, from his country, from the religion being practiced, right? Because he was the only believer in Egypt in his time. What happened? He said, let's come to Yusuf. Yusufa, says the ayah number 99. Continue the next ayah. Up to here, it's when he will come his parents uh, and his uh, of course his his father has more wife they all came uh, 
the brothers, their wives, everybody came. But the 11 brothers and the parents, the one who bowed down to him out of respect, that's his uh, interpretation of his dream. And then he says here, he continues, he says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled my dream. هذا تأويل رؤياي من قبله قد جعلها ربي حقا it came true وقد أحسن بي he said Allah سبحانه وتعالى was so good to me look at that he was so good to me how إذ أخرجني من السجن he didn't say why he went to jail he goes Allah took me out from the jail وجاء بكم من البدو he didn't say I was separated because my brother put me in the will and the, and I became a slave they sold me twice till I came here no he said من بعد وجاء بكم من البدو look Allah سبحانه وتعالى brought you brought you from the Bedouin land dry land all the way to to Egypt we are now together as a family then he goes من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي he didn't look at his brother he said remember what you did to me look now who's better condition you or me look what Allah no he goes من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي he put the blame on the devil. The devil came between us, me and my brothers. Inna Rabbi latifun lima yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so gentle with me. Yusuf talking after all the suffer he went. He said, Min ba'di an latifun lima yasha, inna hu huwa al-alim al-hakim. How can be this man, how can be this man have a such heart, content that everything happened in his life he did not blame on anybody, on anybody. But he claimed that this was done because it's my qada wa qadar min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's my fate. It's my qada. He accepted it and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him, praise him for every exit from every hardship he had. He exited from the jail, right? Yes, he was sold as a slave, but at least he got a very good family who took care of him and raised him in a palace. I, could, I mean, he could be a slave, being treated, you know, whipped with, 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 with a leather uh, every day and mistreated, right? He could be, but they gave him education. He lived in, in a uh, nice family, but later on, you know, what happened, we know what happened. But this is this is the kind of what Yusuf, alayhi salam, he had, he had such such uh, 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 reunion with his family was a such forgiveness with a, such a heart and this is what we need to carry that kind of heart when we have a family member they do bad to us they make us angry how can we say alhamdulillah i ask allah to forgive you i ask allah to repay repay this this bad treatment with a good treatment how we can be like this? How we can be like Yusuf alayhi salam? So the story was not told to entertain us. It's not told to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he can have soothing heart because people of Quraysh mistreated him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to remind him, you're not alone, ya Muhammad. Look at the story of Yusuf. And he became a prophet. Look at the story of Yaqub. He is a prophet, right? No, it's just apply every individual family. And we say every family have a rotten apple. Everybody can say that, I think. Every family have a family member who will cause envy, jealousy, separation, uh, try to, you know, plant hate instead of love, uh, gossiping, right? But what is our react has to be? Has to be, uh, has to be like Yusuf. Think about Yusuf. Every time you hear something like that about family, think about Yusuf alayhi salam. So we have to have that kind of, of, uh, 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 of, of forgiveness. Uh, a fam a forgiveness and and uh, pray for the one who hurt you that on the highest level a human being can have not only you forgive them you make dua for them may allah guide them may allah help them may allah uh, cure their hearts because people who have that that kind of envy and jealousy and hate and gossip uh, they're sick they have sickness in the heart we have to we have to say uh, the uh, you know, he never take like personality against somebody. It could be your own brother or brother wife or sister wife, husband or in-laws, right? Inshallah Ta'ala, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will help us to give us uh, more love in our heart, to uh, cleanse our heart from all the sickness. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala give us the ability to forgive others. If you expect that Allah will forgive you, 
if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, oh Allah, forgive me, we have to forgive each other, inshallah ta'ala. And that is, I think, the best, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, ibra for me. I can have, uh, since the whole surah is about family and family members and forgiveness. Whether uh, Yaqub alayhi salam forgive his boys and he make dua for them, uh, same as Yusuf alayhi salam. Uh, also, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam at the end, of course, when the brother asked, and they said, you're better than us. The, he's, he also promised his brother, I forgive you. I don't carry any hate or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, hate. Nothing worse than hate in my heart against you. Inshallah ta'ala. May Allah forgive us in this holy month. May Allah clear our uh, brain and heart from all the envy and jealousy, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't like it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure our heart from all the sickness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erase our sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us, all of us, all the sisters who's here, who's not here, all of us, inshallah ta'ala, with your family from the hellfire. Amen. 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 If I made anything right, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anything was, uh, it's wrong from me, it's, it's right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Jazakum half an hour exactly. My Allah is going to come in a minute. Allah, 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 Anybody wants to add anything? We'll stop.